So I have here the Holst Forma G660 on a 36 inch bar, also with a Holst Forma chain. I have uh, an Alaskan Mark IV chainsaw mill. This is a uh, 36 inch chainsaw mill. And then on the back here, I have, this is my newer mill. This is the uh, Holst Forma 48 inch chainsaw mill. Um, this has been my, uh, my primary mill for the last several years now. I love it. It's a workhorse. I'll get into some of the things I like about it, don't like about it uh, down the road. I feel comfortable now putting something out with my opinions uh, on this uh, G660. <clears throat> I've had this for nine months and I have uh, I've really worked it hard. Um, this, is, this is my newest mill, uh, this whole Forma back here. Uh, I bought it specifically to mill up a very large tree that I've been working on over the last couple weeks. Uh, and I do have, <laughs> I do have some things to say about this mill for better or worse, but uh, let's get started. Okay, so first I'll start off with this, uh, the Holst Forma, the G660 Blue Thunder. Um, nine months of extremely hard use. It has held up very well. I've been very happy with it, um, with a few minor caveats along the way. Um, so first off, it is a, about a 90 cc chainsaw. It's just shy of 90. Um, when it came, this handle, I did get the full wrap handle. This handle would not screw in for the life of me. So um, <laughs> actually you can see, you can see here, this is the, uh, this is the situation. Look at that, I have, I have the back bolt probably, I don't know, a millimeter off flush. And then the first bolt is, I mean, that's, that's probably two mil off of flush. Um, I did at first believe that this, uh, this wrap handle was plastic, um, but I, I think it's probably an extraordinarily light gauge metal now. Um, I thought about kind of just scratching some of the coating off there to see just what it's made out of. Um, it might even honestly be half plastic, half metal. Um, I don't know. The hand, I do not love the handle. Um, the handle is, um, I'm, I'm shocked it hasn't broken already, but it, it's holding up. Um, I haven't used the handle particularly hard because this is a milling chainsaw. If I were felling with it or doing, you know, some moderate to severe bucking, um, that sounds like a symptom of, <laughs> symptom of some pill you take. If you have moderate to severe bucking, no. <laughs> um, so anyways, the, the Holst Forma does make, uh, um, uh, you know, I guess uh, just the standard handle. I would get that if I could do it all over again. Anyways, and the second reason not to get a full wrap handle is because, um, is because of this reason right here. I, you, you cannot seat this scrunch on the bar nut without angling it. Um, and that's going to, that's gonna strip your bar nuts um, and, and that's just a nightmare. In fact, here's, here's another one. This one is better, but if, if you can see, it's still at an angle. Um, so what I ended up doing, because at first I was using uh, just, just an adjustable wrench. Um, I ended up taking a scrunch and then sawing the back half off of it. And now I can get a full full bearing on that bar nut. So the full wrap handle is, is a no-go. Do not buy the full wrap handle. Um, the second issue with this saw is, is this chain break. This actually, if you can see, it has melted some clearance into the handle. It just rests on that muffler, kind of bounces on and off. Um, it's functional but it, it is just a lot of play. Um, and I'm messing with it enough to break it. But. Now the third thing about this G660 saw that is functional, but I don't love is how mushy these switches are. Um, they're fine, but you really do have to convincingly put it in the right spot. And I would say that the, um, the smallest chainsaw that I have is a, is a steel MS-170 and the, the switch on that is, is sturdier than this, but it's functional and it, and it works. Um, the chain tensioner is complete garbage. Uh, it, it is, if you're using light bars, you know, 14, 16, 18 inch, uh, maybe it won't be a problem. 
uh, but even for those bars, I imagine that you're gonna have a problem with your chain tensioner breaking. Mine stripped uh, actually, <laughs> and I, I found out about it after I drove 45 minutes uh, and, uh, and then got out of the truck and couldn't use a chainsaw. Um, so so a, uh, a chain tensioner from steel, it'll run you probably 40 bucks. I think that's what I paid. Uh, I got the pin and I got the, uh, the helical, the, the sphere gear uh, and the slide, and it was, it was about 40 bucks. So I'd, I'd say plan on doing that right away or carry an extra part with you. And then maybe you can get the life out of this chain tensioner it has. Uh, it's not a big deal. You can do it in the field um, if you're careful and you don't drop stuff, that is. So uh, the chain tensioner on these is, is, is just, uh, just completely non-functional. So um, those things aside, I have to say this has been a very, um, for the most part, reliable saw considering the money. Um, you know, I think there's some misconceptions about these, uh, these whole forma saws. Um, they're not steel quality, not even close. Um, the, the consumer grade steels are, are, as far as the bolt-on parts, are, are better, um, better quality than, than these whole formas. But the thing is, um, if you're somebody like me, who um, I slab a lot of lumber, um, I don't particularly want to go out and spend fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars on uh, on an MS six sixty one CM. Um, number one, because it's got all of these electronic components that I just I don't have the knowledge base or really the desire at this point or the need to learn about how to maintain them. Um, I, and, and the other reason too is if I'm going to spend sixteen hundred dollars on a chainsaw, um, I. I'm probably going to go and invest in in a in a chainsaw and um, a bandsaw mill because you can get into a baseline, you know, wood miser or uh, or or other um, bandsaw mill new for just a couple hundred dollars more than that, and I bet you could you could get a deal on a on a used one. Um, so for me, it just doesn't make sense to spend sixteen hundred dollars on a brand new. 90 cc chainsaw or 92 whatever the cm is um i would much rather pay the 300 and i think 20 that this chainsaw was and uh and and it's fantastic you know for me um the build quality if you're a professional don't do it uh see well, that's my advice unless you're going to put a new handle on uh, a new ignition coil um you're going to change out the tensioner you're going to change out this um um this recoil but, but by that point, I mean, you're, you're probably in the, that's probably $200, $250 in parts. Uh, and now you're turning a $320 chainsaw into a, you know, $600 chainsaw. Um, and, and the economics of that don't, don't quite make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so now we have the 36-inch uh, Alaskan Mark IV uh, chainsaw mill from Granberg. And we have uh, this newer, I got this actually just a, maybe a month ago, this 48 inch mill from Holzforma. Um, I had some real concerns purchasing this, this Holzforma chainsaw mill um, because Granberg does make a 48 inch chainsaw mill. And I, my ethics, it, the, way, the way I think about it, um, even if it would be legal to purchase a um, direct copy of Granberg's 48 inch chainsaw mill, I didn't want to do it. You know, I'd pay the extra 250 bucks to get the Granberg branded chainsaw mill um, if um, if they were a direct copy, because I'm not going to do that. Granberg is an American company. They make things in the US and my ethics just don't square with doing that. Um, Steel's abandoned their patent. Granberg, I don't think, maybe some of their stuff is patented. It's irrelevant. I just, I wouldn't support a foreign company ripping off an American brand that is making, that is currently making a product in America. Um, and so I looked at these two chainsaws and, and there's quite a bit of difference. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's the, it's the same in, in the same way that Toyota and Honda make similar cars. You know, it's just a car. There's going to be some essential similarities, but they are quite a bit different. Um, so for instance, if you look at these cross rails, you know, these cross rails are milled uh, aluminum, I believe, and you can see the design here. And then when you go to the, go to the Holes Forma, this is, this is the cross rail. I mean, very, there's really no similarities there. 
Um, and so, um, long story short, I'm I'm just I'm comfortable purchasing uh, a chainsaw mill from Holes Forma uh, because they are not um, they're not siphoning the intellectual property and effort from Granberg. And I tell you what, after having used this Holes Forma, I've used it um, two or three times. It still is a new chainsaw mill for me. Um, <laughs> I, I don't love it. Uh, in, in fact, my recommendation is to avoid Holes Forma's chainsaw mill products entirely. Things first, um, the biggest difference between these these two mills is the quality of materials. It, it's not even, it's not even close. Um, I'll go ahead and get this. Oh, there we go. Okay, so basically you're working with a three and a half inch, or millimeter, excuse me, thickness on these, uh, on these rails. And you, you do want these to be secure because I find myself torquing these bolts tight this is what keeps your bar uh, secure and in one spot when you're milling. You, you don't want these to come loose. That is 1.8. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about 40% thinner um, pieces of, of steel. Now it is important to have good rails and after what, two or three uses? If you, if you look here, I have bent that rail. I've bent the tubing. You can see it from here. That's not distortion on the camera. That is a, uh, that's a bent rail. Here, I'll see, see if I can show you how much. Look at how much that's bent. Here is the biggest issue with this mill. Uh, the coupling nuts are far too short to be functional. And just to maybe send the point home, this is the scrunch that they send you with that you're supposed to be able to assemble this and, and use it. Um, it. It does not fit over more than probably the first 32nd of an inch of, uh, of this coupling nut. Um, so that's just non-functional. Um, that's actually a big problem. So what I did is I just went out and I purchased, uh, went to my local Ace, and I purchased a set of bigger coupling nuts and I paid, uh, looks like a buck 80 for four of them. And here they are. And I'll just, uh, come on, if I can even, oh, if I can even get this off now, there we go. Um, you know, just so I could use it, I, I did kind of send it home. <laughs> And that's um, and that's my biggest issue with uh, with this mill is you end up needing to spend money right off the bat because it's not functional as they send it to you. Um, and I imagine if if you're in a place where you don't have an ace that's just down the road like I do, you know you might have to order these coupling nuts online, and then you know you've you've just got to go through a whole process in order to make this thing functional and it's brand new. Um, so here is, here's the coupling nut that's gonna go on there. And here is the coupling nut. Oh no, this, <laughs> that's the new one. Um, here's the size difference. I mean, it, it's half the size that it needs to be to be functional, brand new. And so now I can actually use my favorite tool. Um, this, is, uh, this is just a Craftsman. It's a Craftsman uh, wrench that has three eighths, half inch, seven sixteenths, and five sixteenths. Uh, this is this is amazing. I mean, I, I keep I keep a set of these in my truck, and I can work with almost any bolt on my truck that would need regular service. Putting these washers uh, over these bolts that go into these square tubes, and would you look at how recessed that is wow i mean that is uh that is just incredible um these really do need washers um i mean if, if this was torqued and this is just hand torquing it um 
if these uh, were used over time, I imagine you would actually break that tube if you didn't have washers in it. And so I don't know if Holzforma normally sends out washers with these mills and they just didn't for me, um, but uh, you, you will need to go out and buy a set of reasonably thick steel washers uh, in order to, to use this. Otherwise, it that'll fail. So while we are chugging along here, um, if you'll notice, this is one major difference between these two mills. Granberg uses these Allen key nuts on top of their, their rail, uh, whereas Holzforma uses these wing nuts. And when I first got this mill, I did not love the fact that when I adjusted the length, I had to loosen four nuts instead of, uh, you know, I thought this was really simple. That's really great. Wow. There's just one retaining nut instead of having to loosen four bolts. I did not appreciate how finicky these wing nuts would be. Uh, it, I just, I just don't, I don't love this design. And in fact, if you, if you can see after one or two uses, this one's already gone, purely from the vibration of the mill. And so um, I no longer think this is, this is a, uh, a, a poor design. In the grand or, scheme of things, um, that G660 is a great saw. I think uh, investing 40 or 50 bucks into it to make it uh, functional and dependable, or, or I, I'll say it's functional as is, it's just not dependable, I think is the difference. Investing that money to make it dependable is well well worth it. Um, I have milled hundreds, maybe thousands of board feet of lumber with it, uh, and and it's been it's been great. It's more than paid for itself by now. Um, as for these mills, I'd buy Granberg. You know that uh, the price difference isn't significant enough to to be a gamble, and isn't significant enough given the quality of the mill the difference in quality. I mean, it's there are important parts that are, I, I think, skimped on a little bit too much. Whereas the G660, um, I think they get all of the essential components right. There are some, you know, the tensioner, the recoil, you know, the spark plug boot. Um, you know, there are some things that you can improve, but it, it is more or less functional as they send it to you. Um, this mill, I, I don't know if I'm gonna have that mill in two years. Um, and so I, I might not get that same value proposition out of the equipment. You know, all in all, I've been more or less happy with uh, Holzforma's products. I, I think they're good enough where it counts. Um, and I think the price difference between them and uh, either a new steel or a used steel, it's attractive enough to make it worth the gamble. Um, so my advice, if you buy these products, uh, use them like a rented mule for the first six months because there is a six month warranty on those chainsaws. Use it hard. I mean, don't abuse it, but use it hard. Push it to the maximum amount that you are going to, um, you are going to use uh, just so you can test its limits. If it breaks, get a new part, send it back. Uh, but I've been very happy with these, with these parts. Um, but you know, buy Granberg, just, just buy Granberg. It's, um, it's not worth it to go with this 48 inch mill. So, uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys that mill or have an interest in milling, uh, and, uh, and, and you chainsaw guys out there and, uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll be, uh, be happy to see if I can help out.